Welcome to the Remote Services screencast for Gigaspace's ZAP8. Remote service invocation is one of the two mechanisms by which scalability is achieved. The other is asynchronous invocation. And yes, I'm simplifying because I'm ignoring transactions, failover, high availability and consistency, as well as some other things, but work with me here. The two primary remote invocation mechanisms we recommend for ZAP are executor-based remoting and event-driven remoting. The executor-based mechanism hosts the service in the data grid and follows more of an RMI model. It's faster than event-driven remoting and slightly more lightweight. Event-driven remoting follows the master worker model where services are hosted outside of the data grid. This means they're more loosely coupled and this removes a deployment step. New versions would just handle the events with new code. So which is better? Well, from our wiki, written by much smarter people than I, you should usually prefer executor-based remoting. However, you should use event-driven remoting if you don't want the data grid to handle the events itself. This is master worker in motion. Event-driven remoting is also slightly better for burst operations where events aren't distributed in order. Since you can limit the number of consuming threads, you can manage resource starvation more efficiently. However, don't let those features become a siren song for you. You should prefer the executors. They're far more capable and can scale based on your data more easily than event-driven remoting can. Executors provide, you know, the MapReduce functionality and things like that as well. So, for our example, we're going to simulate a cache where you send in a request for a specific object, and if it's not there, we, you know, spend some time constructing it, as you can see right here. Um, you know, it, it basically, if it's not found, it waits for half a second, um, and then it puts it into the space for the next call, so this simulates a cache. This is really kind of lousy architecture. Um, in fact, there's a problem with lock contention here as well, because if we've requested it here, we're not locking anything in the middle. We're not doing transactions here, so this is really bad code. Never use anything like this. If you do, I will hunt you down and, and make you listen to really bad music or something. Um, but this is good example code, uh, just because it gives us a working example that people are kind of used to. Uh, this implements the data DAO interface, which implements itself the DAO uh, uh, interface, which is just a read. Um, the data object itself is just a simple POJO that's serializable. It's got a data item and it's got process data so we can see state coming through. If we look back at our, our uh, DAO itself, you'll see what it does is it actually you know, uppercase is the key if, uh, if something comes in that it doesn't recognize. So the event-driven, um, the, the executor-based system is all configuration-driven. Here's our configuration where we have our standard spring space set up here. We instantiate a bean, we create a, a bean reference. Then we export it via this tag right here. What we're saying is here's the service and we want you to create an exported, you know, reference to it. The uh, code that actually uses this is this code right here. This is a remote executor test. Um, now, one thing you should probably note is that this is exactly the same as our uh, event-driven test. There's really no change except for the name. And the reason that I did that was so I could separate the configurations. Um, I know that I could have separated the configurations even without this, but it was just easier this way. What this does is it reads all of these keys, all of which will be misses initially. Then it rereads these three, so these will be hits, and it's just making sure that the data goes in and comes out, so it's not actually doing any speed tests whatsoever. So let's look at the uh, Spring configuration for the task executor system. We have, again, our standard Gigaspace uh, set up here, and then we have an executor proxy here, which says we're looking for a proxy that fits this interface, and we're going to uh, basically use it in our, in our remote executor test, which, you know, again, is here. It gets a data DAO reference and runs. So let's go ahead and run this thing. Um, if we look at our data DAO implementation again, you'll see that it actually spits some things out to logs to tell us what actually happened. And we'll be looking at that. So let's go ahead and run the remote executor. You can see it's you know, connecting to everything, and then it's going through. This is actually fairly slow. You know, surprise, surprise. Um, so let's look at the actual logs itself, uh, logs themselves. So here we have, you know, our actual references themselves. We read, we create, we return. We read, create, return. Read, create, return here for the hemispheres. 
We come down here and we see read and it found it and returned it. Read, found, return. Read, found, return. So this is doing exactly what we expected it to do. The key here is all in the configuration. Our, our executor test itself just gets a DAO. It's, this is fully imminently injectable, in, you know, testable code. But we're running remotely. We're not running in this, in this JVM whatsoever. So let's look at the event-driven system. Um, as you might expect, it's going to look very, very similar. The main difference is going to be in configuration. Here, what we have is our standard gigaspace uh, instantiation. We're, we're basically saying here's our reference to the space. We create the task DAO. Um, you know, we, this is uh, mostly for the exporting process. Um, so right here, we're actually creating the service exporter again. We're setting up a polling container that refers to the service exporter. Um, this is actually where the event system comes into place. Uh, this is actually creating an event listener that matches uh, the signature of this task DAO itself. So if we look at the test for this, again, we've, you know, the remote event test is exactly the same as the um, executor test, but the configuration is different. So here, what we have is our standard gigaspace initialization stuff there. Um, then down here, we're doing an event-driven proxy. Again, this is the only real difference. In our, in our running code, it still looks like a data DAO. We're still following the same process. So let's go ahead and run this one just to see what happens. And you'll see it does the exact same thing. In fact, pretty much the exact same way. Um, this kind of this test is not long enough to really show a speed difference. Here we have the uh, you know a different return. We're getting it from the events processor instead of the task processor. So we but we see the same the same behavior. Um, we use the same DAO. We exported it just in a different ways. So we got slightly different execution characteristics. The advantage here is that you get remote invocation um, with two different capabilities. One is slightly more scalable and handles burst better. The other is faster and slightly lighter. You get to choose which one you want. And this, of course, avoids the whole use of REST or you know, web services of, of other kinds. But I hope this has been instructive for you. Um, thank you very much, and we will have more screencasts for you soon.